What up, realists? It's your man, D Real, the Black Panther, stalking the urban jungle, and by Brandy McDeedis, bringing you another Be Real with D Real. How you been? Happy Easter. Let's get into it. There are a lot of movies out now about superheroes, superhero based movies. Um, but I'm finding that for some strange reason, there are not a lot of movies out about black superheroes compared to. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you for Black Panther. Thank you for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Thank you for Luke Cage on Netflix. Thank you for Blade back in the day. But I'm going to need a little more than the sparse little superhero movies that we've been getting here and there and every now and then. Oh, hey, look, Black character. No, there are a plethora a plethora of black superheroes out there and some of them a lot of them need their own full-length feature film and i am going to be talking about the top five superheroes that i think need a feature film now warning some of these characters have had a a a series or a film where they were somewhat featured or they weren't represented well. And I am going to be covering those characters. Uh, the number five hero, number five, that I think should have their own movie, I know what y'all thinking, Steel. Now, before you mention that, 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 that dumpster fire of a movie that featured um, Shaquille O'Neal, let me just say, Steel was a character, a decent character, long before uh, Shaq and the people who had them ideas to make that movie messed it up. Steel made his debut in 1993 in The Adventures of Superman number 500. This came on the heels of that death, resurrection, that, door, that whole doomsday thing. And Steele's real name is John Henry Irons. And he was an inventor, construction worker. Uh, long story short, he was an admirer of Superman. And he built his own armor that kind of like mimicked some of Superman's abilities and a lot of things that uh, Superman's abilities, you know, weren't, weren't doing, weren't capable of doing. So uh, the reason why I think Steele needs a movie is because the obvious reason it can be done better. It can be done a whole lot better. Technology, as far as computer graphics and things of that nature, have come a long way since 1993. And I think that we would be able to get a very, very decent rendition of Steel in 2020-something, okay? That's number five. Number four, the number four superhero that I think needs a movie is the John Stewart Green Lantern. Again, yeah, I know there's been a Green Lantern movie, but again, it did not reach the potential that it needed to reach because me personally, I thought it was a decent flick. Uh, not great, but not terrible either. Um, I think y'all was a little too hard, hard on Ryan Reynolds and them, but anyways, John Stewart is an entirely different character than, than Hal Jordan is. And you wouldn't get the same Green Lantern. You wouldn't get the same origin story. You wouldn't get any of that. And, and, and the decisions that, that Hal Jordan chose to make as Green Lantern aren't the same decisions that John Stewart chose to make as a Green Lantern. For instance, John Stewart did not care about whether or not people knew he was the Green Lantern or not to the point where he was like, I ain't wearing no mask. Bump that. Black people been trying, to, been having to hide and, 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 and go under the radar for years. Now we got to do it now that we got a superhero. No, I'm not having it. Just, just right there, that's one example of why, you know, Jon Stewart would be amazing in a full-length feature film. Not to mention that, I mean, if you're going to do Jon Stewart, we got to have Catman in there. You know, Catman was the love of his life. Um, so we should, we should do a little movie like that and, 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 
and have it go down like that. I know there are plans to make a Green Lantern Corps movie, but I just feel like John Stewart needs to be he needs to be singled out and, and, and given the opportunity to shine, if you know what I'm saying. OK, next up, uh, number three, again, is an individual who has more or less been on the screen, but hasn't had a feature film of their own. I'm talking about Cyborg. Yes, Cyborg um, made his debut in DC Comics Presents number 26 in 1980. And then his origin story was told in Tales of the Teen Titans number one in 1982. Everybody knows who Cyborg is. That's the reason why Cyborg needs a movie. Think right now, if it were 2021 and there was no Superman movie, Think if it was 2021 and there was no X-Men movie or no Avengers movie, we would think, my goodness, with all of these superheroes out here, why can't we have one of the one of the best have a book of, I mean, a movie of his own? Cyborg has been in the DC universe for what 30 plus years? He can't get a movie. You know what I mean? Uh, Y'all gave Catwoman a movie before you gave Cyborg a movie, and you see how that went. Yo, give Cyborg a movie. I understand Ray Fisher um, may not necessarily be the guy because of some statements he made about Joss Whedon and his treatment towards the cast during the shooting of uh, 2017's Justice League. Get another guy then. Okay, don't don't give Cyborg the Chadwick Boseman treatment and say, oh, well, Ray Fisher's the only guy that could ever play Cyborg. Plus, Ray Fisher ain't dead. So can we please get a Cyborg movie, something decent? And, 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 and Cyborg doesn't necessarily have all of that backstory and history. So that leaves those freelancing writers who love to take those big, leaping steps plot-wise and story-wise to just go ahead and, 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 and freelance a little bit. You, you know the origin. We've seen the origin in um, Batman versus Superman and, and again a little bit in, in the Snyder Cut of Justice League. So we know what Cyborg's backstory should be or what it should be similar to. When are we going to give old Vic an opportunity to shine on his own and not just 10, 15 minutes in a four-hour movie. Hope you're listening, Warner Brothers. It's a hit for you. Uh, number two on this list, number two, number two is the Blue Marvel. And now the Blue Marvel is a bit lesser known than some of the other uh, superheroes on this list. Blue Marvel made his debut in Adam, Legend of the Blue Marvel, number one in 2008. Why does the Blue Marvel need a movie? Because he is very, very powerful and very, very intelligent. A combination we have not seen in a Black superhero on screen since Black Panther or Shuri or however you want to look at it. I know that's only been about three years, but why should we wait so long to have a Black character with Tony Stark level intellect with Lex Luthor level intellect? Yeah, that's how much brains he has. Basically, the Blue Marvel had an accident that made him into a living quantum energy reactor. It gives him the ability to do feats of superhuman strength, speed, uh, energy, quantum energy manipulation. Basically, uh, the Blue Marvel is Superman without the need for a sun and without the weakness of kryptonite. He's literally one shot at the Hulk, but then nowadays that isn't such a big deal since Thanos made him look silly. Um, he's fought super powerful characters to a standstill. He's also put that amazing mind to work along with T'Challa and a couple of other scientific minds and turned Galactus, the planet devourer, into the planet creator, savior, 
You know what I mean? So Galactus doesn't have to consume planets anymore to satiate it, to satiate, satiate, satiate his hunger. If that ain't a story epic enough to put on screen, how about this? The Blue Marvel's abilities also make him extremely long lived. So he was active in the 1950s. And in the 1950s, he wore a full mask. He got into a battle and that mask got ripped off and the world saw he was black and they blackballed him. Blackballed the Blue Marvel, a black superhero. I'm red with rage and should be green with envy. I just wanted to throw colors in there. That, that, that actually didn't really make no type of urban sense. But the number one hero, the number one hero who deserves a movie, a movie, Luke Cage, a.k.a. Power Man, a.k.a. Carl Lucas, a.k.a. A Bad Motor Scooter. Luke Cage made his debut in his self-titled comic, Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, number one in 1972 amidst the explosion of black exploitation movies. And Luke Cage was Marvel's answer to the black black exploitation craze, just like Iron Fist and Shang Chi were Marvel's answer to the martial arts craze, which was also going on in the 70s, too. If you didn't see the Netflix uh, TV show, Luke Cage is is a man who gets wrongly accused of a crime. He gets incarcerated and he gets, you know, beat up and abused in jail by people until he volunteers for an experiment that gives him superhuman strength and steel hard skin. And just like a man after my own heart, after busting out of jail, he says to himself, what am I going to do with these powers? He said, I'm going to get paid. And that's precisely what he did. Hence the name Hero for Hire. Luke Cage ain't going out and risking his life for you unless it's on paper, some bands in it. Luke Cage once went to the Baxter Building, the headquarters of the Fantastic Four, and jacked, or attempted to jack, one of their vehicles so he could go to Latveria and run up on Dr. Doom for $5. For Luke, it wasn't about the amount of money. It was about being stiffed and showing people that you do not stiff the hero for hire because he will come find you. He does not care if you are in a, a Slavic country. He coming for his money. So you best have it. Now, that was my top five superheroes that I believe need a movie sooner than later. What do y'all think? Am I just whistling Dixie? Am I on to something? Let me know. Drop some opinions in the comments, y'all. Tell me what y'all think about that. Um, and as always, this has been Be Real with D-Real. I'll be back with another scintillating topic. And until then, y'all be good. Be good to each other. 